um, my name is Lee. I'm the manager of a record label called Bit Phalanx. Um, we are based in East London and we specialise in a whole variety of electronic based music. Um, and since uh, it's been about a year or two now, we've been collaborating with Kelly Ali uh, gradually and building things together for her Band of Angels project. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about those. Um, it's kind of a collaboration of two parts and um, two of the tracks on the album which uh, two artists from the Bitphalanx label have been uh, collaborating with um, uh, with Kelly and the first one is a track called Falling and that's been produced with a uh, an artist on my label called Jilk uh, known to his parents as Jonathan Worsley. <laughs> You should have cards of um, staff specialities, and then customers can just draw them. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to put them on our website. Yes. We're having a picture done of all of them. Jilk um, very much specialises in quite glitchy, beautiful, um, melodic, very cut and pasted electronica. He kind of does a lot of field recordings and very textured, dense, um, minute edits and cuts and clicks and. Uh, kind of glues them all together into this wonderful collage over these very throbbing bass lines and this very uh, kind of this big kind of bottom end to the track that's been going on over this very under this very beautiful clicky kind of atmosphere um, but ties them all together beautifully with live strings, uh, live woodwind, uh, drums, very organic folk influence sounds. Um, the track he's been working on with Kelly is called Falling and um, it really had Jilk's name written all over it when Kelly sent us the demo originally. And um, nearly two years ago now I basically gave Kelly a demo CD of some of the prettier stuff on Bitphalanx including some work of John's and um, Kelly was in the original, kind of the initial writing stage for Band of Angels and um, she'd written this track Falling which is kind of one of the seminal pieces in the album because it really talks about um, the themes within the album and um, yeah Falling was this track that um, it needed a very delicate touch but needed very kind of embellishing on but in very delicate minute ways and I think Kelly just really took a shine to uh, one of John's tracks that, were on, that was on the demo and um, so we hooked them up and she sent the demo over to John and he completely jilked on it, completely jilked it all up and made it super glitchy and super kind of textured and dense and um, it was basically a case of moving back and forth between them then just to kind of get the balance right and uh, reach a compromise that is as much jilk as it is Kelly Alley and um, I think they've really pulled it off. It's a beautiful track and as I say, its I don't know if I'm just a little biased, but it's a bit of a seminal piece of the album because the whole album talks about this gang of biker angels that are kind of roaming around searching for something and um, I think this track kind of talks about how they fell. I don't know, you'd have to ask Kelly to clarify that. But um, yeah, it's a really beautiful kind of sombre but haunting moment on the album and um, I think Jilk's nailed it, he's done a really good job.
Um, the second collaboration is with a musician, producer, composer uh, by the name of Martin Fone, um, but to his parents and friends he's known as Stefan Ingalls. Chips and cheese! It's Chips and cheese! Chips and cheese is a classic. Um, picked it up initially at Keele University. Oh, university mix in. And uh, that was a classic thing, so at the end of the night you always go and get chips and cheese. But they didn't really taste very nice generally. I have chips and cheese at Alistair's over the road. Chips are amazing. Cheese from Sainsbury's, you get some like, you know, nice cheese from the cheese counter. For lunch, it's sets you up for the day. That is f***ed up, Stefan. It's good. It's good chips and cheese. <laughs> That's my chip. Um, I met Stefan probably about four, maybe five years ago, and um, he co-manages a recording studio called Antenna um, in Crystal Palace in South London, which I used to work for uh, for a while, uh, for a little while, uh, a few years ago, uh, running the night shifts when some crap kind of indie band would want to come and rehearse at four in the morning and no one else wanted to run the place. Um, I remember Stefan coming in one day with a whole uh, kind of just load of demo CDs and compilations that he and this collective that he's he's also part of um, put together and this collective are called Double Dot Dash and they're based in Reading and they're very much more folk orientated and acoustic than Bit Phalanx but still have their foot in very much in electronic music um, and yeah, Stefan gave me these compilations with lots of tracks of his on them, which I just fell in love with because he's a great pianist and um, his piano lines are just absolutely beautiful and he has this very clockwork approach to how he kind of regiments the electronic production on top of them and just puts these very beautiful washy synth melodies underneath it all and just ties it all together beautifully. Um, on that CD that I gave Kelly a couple of years ago with various Bit Phalanx artists on, um, there was this one piano piece that Stefan had made and I think it was just a demo that he didn't quite know what to do with and just sent it me and I thought Kelly would like it. Uh, just to kind of seduce her into Bit Phalanx really. Um, she again was in the initial writing period for Band of Angels and during that time she was in Europe, she spent a lot of time out in Europe. Um, I think she was in Hungary, I can't remember. Um, and yeah, she took this CD with her and um, yeah, this track called The Art of Love basically um, was inspired from one of this, this piano piece that was on the CD of Stefan's and um, she kind of wrote this kind of lyric on top of Stefan's original piano lines and just really fell in love with the track and so when she returned from Europe um, we kind of hooked them up and she went down to Antenna Studios and met Stefan for the first time properly and basically bashed this track out together and um, I think it's the first track on the album so it really introduces the album in a very um, quite a powerful note and really sums Stefan up because I've always said he's got a good balance between the absurd and the beautiful and um, this track is a bit of both. It starts with this very beautiful kind of washy melody, and this gorgeous piano line and Kelly kind of comes in, um, but there's a really bombastic kind of crazy loud cymbal crashy all over the place uh, midsection in the song which really adds just a massive boost of dark drama to the track. Okay, cymbals. <laughs> Munchkin fingers, just film this. <laughs> Go on, do it again. In context, it's beautiful. It really, really works, um, but it is crazy, and I think it summarises how Stefan operates quite well. Um, a good example is I'll send him a track and say, go on, do a remix of this, and he'll come back to me a couple of weeks later and say, oh, I think I've made trance music again, and I panic for a second, 
and um, I'll sit down and listen to it and while there is a bit of a trance kind of <laughs> going on uh, deep within the track um, he's just got a way of taking that absurd element and making it so beautiful and so very Martin Vaux and um, even when he kind of experiments with loud crashy cymbal crashes and massive bass lines and big explosive noises um, he knows how to tie it all together beautifully and the art of love summarises that absolutely very subtly but very powerfully and I think it really kicks the album off to a, a fantastic start and he's really got what Kelly needs to start the album with on that one um, so yeah they've done done well the pair of them, they've done really well again I'm a little biased also maybe need to actually record some more to find the sound. Yeah, okay. This is also this is a let's get the structure. Okay.